Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Death in Blue Jeans, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If you feel as though you've just read your own name in the obituary columns, you get a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. My dear Mr. Valentine, as the librarian in a small mother town like Vincent Flats, I don't see much of the world, but right here in my own books, I can see murder. And the horrible part of it is the man who will die won't believe it. Mr. Valentine, he's the man I've chosen to marry. Please come, please hurry. But don't on any account let anyone know why you're coming or all of us will be in terrible danger. You can find me alone at the library in the evening. Yours truly, Miss Emily Windrick. Fresh air, Brooksy, fresh air. You're in the mountains. Oh. Well, you don't have to drive over every one of them, do you? Sorry, Angel. They must have built this road back in the gold rush. Uh, Hey, you hear that? Sounded like... Hey, George. Where are they coming from? I don't know. It's so dark in all these trees. Well, maybe someone's out hunting. Hey, hang on, Brooksy. Get down, get down. Oh, golly, could you see anybody? Flashes by the side of the road. They were aimed at us, all right. But how could they find out about Miss Wintrick riding to us and... Hey, George, what's that? Uh, that's a roadblock. Somebody's stopping all the cars. Yeah, there's a man with a lantern talking to them. Yeah, well, he looks official. Maybe now we get the answer. All right, all right, drive on. Well, good evening. Well, hello, folks. Welcome to Benson Flats. Well, does everybody coming to town get shot at? Or were we just lucky? That happened to you, stranger? Don't tell me you didn't hear... It was just around the last curve. Is that so? Excuse my lantern. Got a check. That's all. Right. Well, well, you don't have to hold that gun so close I can count the notches. We don't aim to hurt nobody, so just step out of the car quiet like. Come on now. You better, George. Okay, Jesse James. Now, do you mind telling me what this is all about? Don't be so far touchy, stranger. Uh, you need me, Pete? Yeah, Dusty. Suppose you drive the girl into town. Oh, no, you don't, Frank. Hey, stranger, oh. cut it out. Look out, oh, Pete. Oh. Hey, got him. Don't worry. Oh, now, look, little Abner. For the you... last time, stranger. Nobody's going to get hurt unless you want it that way. What do you characters think you're doing? Just taking your boyfriend to a nice, safe place, lady. Huh? The jail. Come on, come on. Jailer. Anybody. All right, all right. Simmer down, simmer down. I don't feel so good. I don't like all that noise. Well, that's tough, Buster. What's this all about? Just call me saddlebags, partner. Everybody else does. Why? Because you wear them under your eyes? Hmm? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty good. No, I tell you. I come to see you because I'm the judge. Judge? You look about as legitimate as this jail does. Well, it used to be the jail back in the old mining days. I remember back in... Forget it, will you? Now, what do you want? What do they do with a girl, Miss Brooks? Ain't interested in history, huh? Okay, partner. That's the way you feel. Come on now, come on. But only mind you, no tricks now. Don't worry. I'll wait till we're using my deck. <laughs> Maybe it's ulcers you got to make you act like... Oh, I know, I know. All you care about is the girl. All right, partner, take a look. What? Hello, George. Hey, Brooksy, Brooksy, what on earth is uh, Order in the court, everybody! Order in the court! Oh, George, you look so funny. He sure does, miss. And it's going to cost him 20 bucks. What? Would you... <laughs> you don't have a beard. 20 bucks are back to jail. If you shave while you're in town... Twenty bucks more. You mean a beard? Oh, brother, now I've heard everything. Welcome to the Benson's Flat Centennial Week, partner. Everything like it used to be a hundred years ago. Oh, door, stand the foot. Don't worry. Blank cottages won't hurt you now. Come on, boys. Let's get another stranger without a beard. <laughs> Oh, 
Mr. Valentine. I'm, I'm so glad you finally got here. It took him a little time to count out $20, Miss Wintry. Shh, not so loud, huh? please. Uh, does one always whisper in a library, even when there's nobody around? Oh, but there is someone over there behind the magazines. Now, if you'll follow me, we'll go in here where we can talk. But take a good look at me as you go by. Yeah, all right, Miss Wintrick. There. That's why I asked you to come in this evening. Did you see him? Yeah. Tall, graying, dignified, but dressed in homemade clothes. He looked like he was just staring at those comic books. He comes in here every night. He just sits there. He's trying to be casual, that's all. But then he takes his real books out. Uh, Miss Wintrick, suppose you start at the beginning. Yes, what does all this have to do with the murder you said you were afraid of? He's certainly not the one you've chosen. Oh, well, I hope to goodness not. <laughs> but you see, he, the man out there, is Henry Benson. Benson? Like in Benson Flats? Uh, yes, it's an old-time mining family. Only Henry's never been in town until the last two weeks. He's, oh. he's always lived in the hills alone ever since he was a boy. Most people don't even remember there was such a person. I see. He came to visit his brother unexpectedly. His brother, who's considerably more well-to-do than he. In mining? Oh, there, there's very little mining here these days. But his brother is the owner of the big family house and so on. And it's the brother you're going to marry, is it? Yes. <laughs> yes, saddlebags, Benson. Saddlebags? You mean you and... Yes, yes, indeed, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> of course, it's, it's still a secret to everyone else, but I, I assure you, we, we've already asked each other. <laughs> well, how nice. But frankly, I'm a little surprised myself, Miss Wintrick. Saddlebags didn't impress me as being, well, exactly your type. Then, then you've met him. Yes, we could hardly avoid it. Oh, I know he's rough and full of good spirits, but <laughs> that's what I love about him. He's so... Well, um, Miss Wintrick, <laughs> uh, what makes you think that just... Oh, Mr. Ben... Excuse me. Why, not at all. You're busy. I'll wait. Oh, no, uh, no, no. Uh, Miss Wintrick's just showing us around. Uh, you see, we're uh, magazine reporters covering the centennial. You'll find most of that outside, uh, Mr. Did you want me to check some more books out, Mr. Benson? I can wait, thanks. Oh, don't be ridiculous. We still have lots of questions we want to ask Miss Wintry. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I, I'll take care of you right now. That's uh, quite a stack of books you have there, friend. You must do a lot of reading. And uh, you must like science, Mr. Benson. Huh? Why? Just give me back the book, please. Yeah, sure. Night, Miss Wintry. Good night, Mr. Benson. Hey, strange, isn't he? So he's reading an introduction to basic chemistry and Beacon's Guide to... Oh, prisons. I've made a list of the others he's taken. Here it is. Every book we have in the library on poison. Uh-huh. And it's your idea from that that he's going to poison his brother's saddlebags? Oh, I know it sounds far-fetched, but Henry's penniless. And they're the only two left in the family, so he's everything to gain. Oh, but really, Miss Wendy? Listen, I... listen, please. Saddlebags has always been as healthy as... As an old horse. Even the doctor told him so the last time he was in the city. But three times in the last week, three times, mind you, he's had attacks. Spells. Well, George, he didn't look too well tonight. Yeah, I remember. Well, what's his explanation, Miss Wintrick? Oh, he just laughs and says I'm being silly. But, Mr. Valentine, you're not going to say that, are you? You will stay. You will help me, won't you? All right, Miss Wintrick, all right. We'll check in at the hotel and see you in the morning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And don't let it worry you if I'm wearing a beard. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Miss Winter. <laughs> Brother, will you listen to that? Yeah. Really whooping it up, aren't they? Yeah, and the little spinster sits there in her library scared to death of something else. You know, George, now I'm the one who's beginning to wonder. Uh-huh. I know what you're thinking, Brooksy. <laughs> if there is anything to her idea, poison's a funny weapon for any man up here to pick, isn't it? Poison. A woman's weapon. Oh, no, she couldn't. George! I'm sorry, Angel. I didn't mean to oh, shove so God. hard. But I think we'll make a complaint to the local sheriff in the morning. What's the matter? There's too much shooting going on here. Look at my coat. But... Oh, George. Yeah, that hole didn't come from a blank cartridge or from a spinster's imagination. Yeah. 
Yeah, square dancing in the street. Ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, sounds like fun, Sheriff, but I wish you'd... Yeah, sure is. But being shot at's a little different, eh, Mr. Valentine? Yes, yes, I know. My assistant out there, Stevens, told me you complained about it. Well, I'm just touchy about things like that. Last night, eh? Uh, and your magazine people, he said. <laughs> Not very good public relations for Benson Flat. You don't seem to take this very seriously, Sheriff. Oh, but you must realize it was just an accident, Miss Brooks. You do. Now, don't you, Mr. Valentine? Maybe. Uh, Mr. Valentine, you don't impress me as a man who'd be complaining about a near miss. Well, Sheriff, maybe I just want to do a little horse trading. Huh? What do you mean? We forget to advertise the bullet. And in return, you give us some good stories. You know, good local color. Oh, well, now you're talking my language. What do you know about the Benson family, Sheriff? Huh? Benson's? Why? Well, it's Benson Flats. That'd make a good article. Yeah. I can, uh, I can see how you'd feel that way. Saddlebags is certainly a colorful character. No soap. Saddlebags is pretty busy right now. Centennial Committee and all. I'm not sure he'd want to be bothered. I'm asking you, Sheriff. Uh... Sorry. Can't help you, Mr. Valentine. Well, what about his brother, the big silent mountain man? There's such a contrast. I, uh, I don't know much about Henry either, miss. Now look, we thought there might be something in why he came to town for the first time in years, you know, that's all. Did you? <laughs> oh, say now. No, no, no. You're off on the wrong tack, folks. What you want is some real color, like, uh, well, like the hang tree uh -huh. or... Uh... And there's... Nothing you want to tell us about the Bensons, eh, Sheriff? But if there's... Well, if there's any other way I can help, I... I oh, uh, any other hey, way... Hey, oh, Sheriff. Oh, oh, it's nothing. I... George! Oh, oh. Uh, Mrs. Stevens! Oh. Anybody get a doctor, quick! That won't do much good, Brooksy. What? That poison Miss Wintrick worried so much about. The Sheriff seems to be full of it. Return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. When mother wants to use the family car for some hurry-up shopping, when brother wants the car for a very special date, or when it's dad's club night, there had just better be Chevron Supreme gasoline in the tank. For there are no slow starts with premium quality Chevron Supreme. The moment you press the starter, you're off to a good start, a fast start. Chevron Supreme's special blending gives your car faster warm-up, too, and ping-free power on hills. Count on it to get the best out of your car wherever you drive and whatever the reason. You see, Chevron Supreme's climate-tailored, specially blended according to the time of year and to each different altitude and temperature zone in the West. For today's high-compression engines, you can't buy a better gasoline. Try Tankful tomorrow. Get Chevron Supreme at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. to an isolated little town in the mother load, only to find that they've rolled back the sidewalks for a centennial celebration. Before you know it, you're not only charged $20 for not sporting a beard, but you're shot at. You go to see your client, a timorous spinster who fears that the man she's chosen to marry will be murdered by his brother. But it's the cagey local sheriff who dies instead. Well, when the doctor confirms that the weapon was poison, you turn the crime over to the proper authorities. Then at least if you study the primer as well as George Valentine does, you waste no time in chercheing La Femme. Oh, dear. But what did you tell them about me? Oh, not much, Miss Lindry. But what? Well, the man who's handling it, Mr. Stevens, seems both efficient and trustworthy. But I didn't tell him much. Because I don't think you told me much. Well, I, I, I explained to you last night. Yeah, but... I know, Miss Wintrick. You showed us Henry Benson, who's been taking out books on poison. But you gave us no reason why you were so sure he was thinking of murder. But I told you. Come to think of it, why all this secrecy in the first place? Yes, everything's secret. Even your engagement to saddlebags. Oh, stop it. Stop it, both of you. Now, look, Miss Winter, I'm afraid you'll have to trust us a little more. Oh, I, I'm so confused. The poor sheriff dying and no, dear. Please, 
We just want to help you. Did, did you ever see what happens in a gold rush? Gold? You, you mean somebody's actually... I did, Mr. Valentine. Right here in my own library, I found gold. Go on, go on. Well, I, I was doing the research for the centennial old papers and letters and so on, and I, I came across a description of a lost mine, one of the old Benson mines. And so you went to Saddlebags with the news. I didn't know what else to do. I, I knew I could trust him, and anyway, it really belonged to him. Besides, I'd always... Well, if he found out about the mine from me... I he... think I understand, Miss Winter. Oh, it's been the most thrilling thing in my life, having a secret with him. <laughs> with a man. Yeah. Uh, of course, you understand, I, I wasn't asking for a share of the mine or anything like that, but... Now, Willie, he, he does like me. There's no reason we can't be happy together. Yes, I'm sure he loves you for yourself. Well, thank you. He might someday. A anyway, uh, there was so much to be done at first. The legal things and the property and uh, arranging the claims without letting anyone guess. Well, what about his brother, Henry? Well, I told you he came to town unexpectedly. And, of course, Saddlebags intended to, to save him his proper share. But Henry was always so unpredictable, so unreliable. So Saddlebags just told him a little bit about some good luck and begged him to be patient. Uh huh. And just about then, Henry started coming here to the library to take out books on poison. Emily! Emily! Saddlebags! Where in tarnation are you? Emily! Oh! Ah! <laughs> Now, now, come on now, Saddlebags. The doctor said you should keep drinking this. Come on. No, don't taste good, Miss Brooks. Yeah, I know, I know. Why can't I have some whiskey? You'll have no such thing, Saddlebags. No, oh, blast your skinny soul, Emily. Okay. That's better, come on. <clears throat> Where am I, anyway? You're all right, Saddlebags. The doctor will take you home in a few minutes. Oh, hello, Stevens. And partner. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Gordon Whiskers now, I see. Good. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to be in the spirit of things. For the gold rush. Uh, what? Well, I told them. I, I had to tell them. Oh, Saddleback, I'm so sorry. Oh, I... it's all right, Emily. It's all right. Everything's been taken care of anyway. Legal stuff all finished. Okay, then maybe you'll answer some fast questions. Maybe. We talked to the sheriff earlier, but he didn't want to talk about you. <laughs> that's natural. Why? Well, he's in on it with me, that's why. Helping with the legal end. He's sort of a small partner. You mean was. The sheriff's dead. Dead? But, but he stopped by the house just after breakfast for a little... The sheriff was poisoned. And he ate breakfast in a drugstore. We checked. Who's we? Uh, him and me and... And Henry? Told him all about the mine this morning. Figured it was time to. But then he poured the drinks. I know he did. He must have. Oh, shut up, Emily. No, he didn't. Only, come to think of it, he didn't take one either. He said he'd wait till later. You know where he is now? No, darn it, I don't. Look, Stevens, he's a Benson, and I don't care what Emily hey, thinks. Hey, Saddlebags, the doctor said you had more poison in you than the sheriff. Now, come on, you've got a pretty good idea where he is, don't you? Why don't you spill it? All right. Heading for the mine, of course. A little while after the sheriff left the house, I went into my desk to look up the papers. Yeah? Only when I opened the desk, I saw the old original letter telling about the location of the mine was missing. He yelled for Henry. He wasn't anywhere in the house. Well, I thought maybe Emily had it. I was on the way to the library to ask her when the pains got me. Okay, saddlebags, thanks. All set, Valentine? You ready? Look, Stevens, do you mind telling me what you're going to do with the rest of those people out there? You don't need that many deputies to go beating the brush for Henry. We can handle the crowd, all right. How'd they find out so fast, anyway? In a little town, you'd be surprised how well folks add two and two, Miss Brooks. Here's a gun for you, Valentine. Hey, wait a second. Hey, listen to that. Uh, Vicky Jones, he's just like in the good old days. Are you sure? I said, don't worry. The minute that crowd finds out it's Gold Henry's up there for her, 
They'll forget all about him. Then we'll have the whole state of California on our necks. Okay, Stevens, but we're not going with you. But I told No, no, you... we're out of it. You've got your crimes and you know who you're looking for. Come on, Brooksy. Okay, see you later. George, what on They earth? just don't know where to look, Brooksy, that's all. Huh? Come on, Angel, out the back way. We're going to get Henry Benson first. <laughs> Hey, this must have been quite a place in the old days when it was kept up. Yeah. Take it easy, Angel. I don't know exactly what we're going to find, but I think we'd better go in without knocking. Hmm. California hospitality. Yeah. Well, here goes nothing. Mr. Benson? Mr. Benson? Well, George, it's only a hunch Henry's here anyway. It's only... Hey, wait a minute. Let's... That's upstairs. Yeah. Come on. Not in here. This room, George. Yeah, there he is, all right. Oh, not again. I'm afraid so, Brooksy. More poison. Look, George, he's still holding a bottle. Come on, get his collar loose. Yeah. Must have just taken it a few minutes ago. George, the bottle's even marked. Penciled on the whiskey label. Special bottle. I guess that's it, all right. Exhibit A. Now, look, Brooksy, there's got to be a phone. Or if there isn't, take the car. Yeah, I know, I know, George. Hey, how about that? Right in your pocket, huh? The old mine letter. Saddlebags! Doctor! Uh -huh. Doctor, hurry! Hey, hurry up here, will you? Come on, get up here. Yes, coming, I'm coming. Hey, what is it? Got another customer, Doc. Well, looks like he paid his own bill, don't it? Henry! Partner, what happened? All right, clear out of here, all of you. Go on, out of here. Get out. Can, can he do anything? Can he save him? I don't know, Saddlebags. Henry must have seen all the excitement in town. He knew everybody was out to find him, so instead of going to the mine, he came back here. Yeah, it looks that way. And then because he knew the jig was up, he drank his own whiskey. I won't believe it. Well, it's what the evidence says. The bottle was in his hand, this was in his pocket. Hmm. The mine letter from my desk. Description of where the mine is. Uh-huh. And nobody could have planted this stuff on him after the poison hit because that only happened a few minutes ago. Anyway, he was the one who took those books on poisoning out of the library in the first place. I know, but don't go Buck up, saddlebags. Buck up. You're taking this too hard. George, he's gone. Pardon us. Sidearms, Brooksy. Only now I've got it. How do you like that, tenderfoot? Little trick I learned from seeing westerns. And I'll bet this isn't loaded with blanks either. And the bullet that just missed me last night came from this gun. Pardon us. What's the matter with you? Your brother didn't leave this house since breakfast, did he? He didn't even know there was a mine to go look at. Well, what are you talking about? You, Saddlebags. A guy who's so greedy for gold, he's got to rub out everyone who owns a share and blame it on his brother. What are you going to do with Emily? Just not marry her? You're out of your mind. You've been working on it for a couple of weeks. You even gave yourself small doses of poison to build up a resistance. So you wouldn't die when you drank it this morning with the sheriff. George! Well, you, you, you just been saying the, the evidence is the letter. That's easy, friend, like the bottle. Just suppose after the sheriff left, you gave the bottle to Henry, knowing he'd drink from it sooner or later. Why? And the letter. Suppose you gave him the letter and told him to keep it. Only he never knew what was in it. Just like he never knew what was in those books you sent him down to the library to get. You're not making sense, partner. Henry, he ain't blind. No, but he's a better patsy than if he were. Because you've been keeping a secret for your bashful, backward hillbilly brother, haven't you? George, what are you driving at? That everything that happened does make sense. If you just suppose for a minute... That Henry can't read. Yes. Henry took the books out by number, index number. I understand, but... Oh, well, uh, Miss Wintrick, we have to be going. It's a long drive, But and... how did Saddlebags persuade Henry to run his errands for him? And, and why was Henry so bashful about not being able to read? Do we have to draw you a diagram? Ask him. He's all better. Henry liked to come to the library. He liked to sit there pretending he was reading the comic book. What's that? Uh, you see, Emily, he, uh, he really wanted to look at the library. Oh, but you don't... Oh, Henry Benson? 
Do you really think so? <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Winfrey. Good luck. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Oh, George, do we have to go so soon? We haven't even seen the centennial. We have much time, Angel. Hey, what are you doing? Hmm. Loading a square dial part. Oh, darling. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's not such a bad idea. Ooh, it? your beard, George. I forgot. Well, so long, Benson Flat. See when you have a shave. If you're going away on a vacation pretty soon, you're probably figuring out just where you'll be driving each day and how you're going to spend those happy vacation hours. To help you stay on your carefree vacation schedule... Why not give your car's engine the extra protection of RPM motor oil? This compounded premium quality oil cleans the engine as it lubricates. A special detergent in RPM disperses sludgy carbon particles, keeps internal parts cleaner, free of carbon and lacquer deposits. Other compounds in RPM stop corrosive rust, protect the hot spots left bare and exposed to wear by ordinary motor oils, so rely on RPM motor oil to help keep your vacation free of trouble. Remember, the extra protection RPM gives car engines makes it first choice in the West. Ask for RPM at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Next week, when we catch up with the very groggy George Valentine aboard a luxury cruiser in foreign waters, we'll hear... Oh. Take it easy, darling. Uh, You've been out, that's all. Yeah, sure, and a hammer works. Hey, Brooksy, the ship isn't moving. What time is it? Ten o'clock in the morning. What happened, George? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I was walking on the deck and the Empire State Building fell on me. Ten o'clock, huh? Well, then we've dropped anchor. Come on, quick, Brooksy, give me my coat. George, you're not going ashore. Not yet. Because there's a fortune in smuggled stuff on this ship. And, Brooksy, I want to be sure it's still there. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Herbert Little, Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Sarah Selby as Emily, Horace Murphy as Saddlebag, Stephen Chase as Henry, Dick Ryan as Sheriff, Ken Christie as Pete, and Jack Mather as Stephen. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Mm-hmm.